1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 14 in the Common English Bible. Love and God. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. Amen. Amen. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know we remain in him and he remains in us because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God's Son, God remains in us and we remain in God. We have known and have believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who remain in love remain in God, and God remains in them. This is how love has been perfected in us, so that we can have confidence on the judgment day, because we are exactly the same as God is in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love God. We love because God first loved us. Amen. 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 You know, I love to preach about the love of God, and most Amen. of you in here that have been with me uh, for the last few years, last 10 years, <laughs> know that about 90% of my messages is about the love of God and how He provides for us, how He takes care of us, how He is merciful to us, how He is long-suffering toward us, and that is one of the main themes of the Bible. Yes, that, it is. that God is love. Yes, it is. And uh, right. everything that, that God does is centered around helping us and making our lives better and keeping us out of trouble and doing things that, that will bring us closer to Him. Mm -hmm. And one day we will all be with Him and we will be rewarded according to our uh, actions here on earth. Amen. That's right. But there is another theme that is within the theme of love and mercy, and that is the theme of accountability. That's right. Amen. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, and, and our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, all have the same attributes. And one of those attributes is not only love, but helping us to understand that we have rules and boundaries that are set out there for us to help us, not to restrict us or to bring us in bondage uh, back under the law that, that Jesus Christ died to, to release us from the sacrificial law of the Old Testament, but he has uh, given us th this idea of accountability so we will walk closer to him and receive his blessings. Amen. Joshua challenged the children of Israel right before they were fixing to go into the, the promised land. And, and he said to them as, as they were fixing to make this change in their life, it was going to be a great change because they had been in bondage for over 400 years in slavery and Moses had led them out of the, the uh, Egypt and now they were fixing to go into a new type of life. But many of them, even though they had been delivered from slavery, they had not been delivered from the idols that they had been worshiping or the, the influence of the world that they had been in. They had been, not been delivered from uh, the, the influence of the Egyptian type of lifestyle. But going into this new life and this new land, this promised land, Joshua gave them a challenge. And he said in Joshua 24, 15, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Amen. And today the title of my message is Who is on the Lord's side? Amen. Now I would now I know most of you and I know most of you love God and, and you have chosen to follow Him and, 
and you've had struggles in your life, but you're still coming to church and you're still asking God for, for help. But often we need to ask ourselves, are we really on the Lord's side? Because that's a very important question. God's Word emphasizes salvation by grace and that when we accept Him as our Savior, He willingly accepts us into His family. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself, it's a gift Amen. of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Some people just like to read that first part. For by grace are you saved uh, through faith and that not of works. But if you continue to read that verse, you will see that God is working in you to make something wonderful out of you. Everything God creates is beautiful and wonderful and efficient and productive. And He is trying to work something in you. Amen. And the way He does it is through your good works. That's right. So there is a very important part of salvation that goes beyond just walking down an aisle saying I want to be saved and saying a prayer and getting up and walking out and, and, and thinking that you've done everything that's that you need to do to, to check off that thing so you can go to heaven. Some have even used this verse as a, a false sense of security that, well, I said a prayer, so I'm never going to, to uh, 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 I'm not going to miss heaven and I'm not going to hell because I said that sinner's prayer and, and I got up in church and said, told everybody I was a Christian. But what they failed to follow through in that is that they uh, have not allowed God to do a work in them. Amen. They have done a they have done a visible profession of faith, but they have not let the Lord uh, live in them and work in them. And they think because they have made that profession or they have joined the church that they are exempt from any of the consequences of of sin. Amen. Because I'm a Christian, I, I can get away with stuff now because God has forgiven me. But I'm going to tell you that is contrary from the, to the Word of God and counter, counterproductive to everything that He wants to do for you. <laughs> they forget the second part of the verse that says we were created, born again, saved, whatever term you want to use. We were All that was done for good works. So God might be able to use you. You are His uh, legs and your, he, His feet and His mind, His mouth. On the planet Earth, God has chosen you, and He wants to do some wonderful things in you. People that think this way, that think I can go ahead and live any way I want to, they are not on the Lord's side. I'm asking you, Dale, are you on the Lord's side? Amen. And the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about how you can know you're on the Lord's side in a little while, but but this is not saying that any of us will ever reach perfection or that we will ever not make mistakes but I'm saying we need to evaluate ourselves today on whose side we're on because I don't want any of you to stand before the Lord one day and and uh, you think you're saved and you're really not saved That's right. it's very important that you understand what salvation and being born again and and what uh, this experience of, of knowing God and and having God come into your heart is all about you need to, to be very clear on that. Amen. And again, those people that think you can just go on and, and live any way without any consequences, you're, uh, the Bible is saying that, no, that's not right. In Romans 6, 1 through 3, Paul was challenged with that because the people, uh, at the, some of the churches he was pastoring, they said, well, we can live the way we did before, after we got saved, and there's no, no problem. And this is what, what Paul said to them. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in our sin that grace may be abound? You want to keep doing wrong so you know God will forgive you, but you just want to keep doing wrong just because there is a, a forgiveness there of God? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? When you accept Christ as your Savior, you're saying, Lord, I don't want to live in sin anymore. I want to. I want that. I want these chains of that bind me. I want to be loose from them. 